Harold Green and Marianne Bannister, Eyewitness News at 4. Just told him to jump, he jumped. I understand that you have to do what they say. Who are they? What we have to do is behave as if everything is all right. He needs our support. He needs help. Daddy, I love you. My dad can't be crazy, can he? Next. Today's after-school special depicts a family coping with mental illness. Parents are encouraged to watch and discuss with their children. What? It's the middle of the night. What are you talking about? They said they put a microphone in here. They said you were talking to them. Them? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you drunk or something? Drunk? <laughs> no. No, no, of course not. Uh, I'm sorry I woke you up, Nicky. I must have been having a bad dream. Here, just try to get some more sleep, okay? Come on, let's go. Dad, where are you going? Dad, come back. Okay. From last night's assignment, we learned that in 1953, two scientists made probably the most significant biological breakthrough of the century and were awarded a Nobel Prize in 1962. Danny, Danny, can you give us their names? Their names? Uh, did you mean their first names or last? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever comes to mind, Danny. You did do the assignment last night. Oh, yeah, of course. Absolutely. I know those dudes. They won the Nobel Prize, right? <laughs> their names? James Watson and Francis Crick. James Watson and Francis Crick, of course. That is correct. That's very good, Danny. James Watson and Francis Crick. Hey, hey, dude. What's your name? Nick. Nick Karpinski. Danny Beck. Man, uh, you really saved me in there. I owe you one. Oh, no sweat. Uh, you're new here, huh? Yeah, we moved here over the summer. This is a nice school. That's pretty cool. So are you a science head or what? I'm no genius, but I do pretty good in it. What about sports? I do a little bit of everything, but uh, basketball is my game. Are you a Laker fan? All the way. All right, my main man. Hey, you want to come to the gym and shoot some baskets with me? I'll have to go home and check, but uh, when? Uh, about an hour. Do you know where it is? Yeah, if I can, I'll meet you there. OK. Nick? You're Nick Karpinski, aren't you? Jack's son? Yeah? I've seen your picture. I'm Bill Edmonds from your dad's office. Hi. Is he okay? Okay. What do you mean? You haven't seen him for over two weeks. He walked out in the middle of the day without a reason, without saying anything to anybody. 
I uh, told Mr. Allison I could drop his things off. It's on my way. Maybe you could take them up for me. Sure. Well, tell him to give Mr. Allison a call. sits in front of you? Lois Mueller? Wait a minute. You mean the awesome redhead who hangs around with the blonde with the rad body? That Lois Mueller? Good man, Karpinski. I like your powers of observation. Okay, the blonde is Karen Zimmerman. I'm in love with her. But she doesn't know it because I've never spoken to her. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. Okay, Karen goes nowhere without Lois. Now, since you're the only other guy in our class that's not a total geek, I suggest we ask him out together. You know, like for pizza or something after school. What do you say? I say cool. All right. I can't Nick, get... tell me how this box got here. Mr. Edmonds brought it. Mr. Edmonds? You and Mr. Edmonds, huh? Hiding things from me? Doing things behind my back? Nick, what did Mr. Edmonds say when he brought the box? Do you want to tell her that? I know I couldn't trust Edmonds. Nick, you tell me, what did he say? Mr. Edmonds said that Dad just left work one day and didn't come back. So they cleaned out his desk for him. Again? That week you came home early. Did you go in at all? Last week you said you had the flu, but you didn't, did you? What's wrong this time? You know. Oh, Jack, no, I don't. This was supposed to be the perfect job. We love this city. We love this apartment. What, what's the matter this time? Ask Nicky. He knows all about the box. A <laughs> clever little fox. Fox in a box. Dad, why are you doing this? You're acting crazy. Is that what Edmund said about me, that I was crazy? No. He never said anything like that. He was worried about you. He wants you to call Mr. Allison. They're very clever. They always know just what to say. Mom. The other night, Dad was in my room with a flashlight looking for a microphone. Oh, Nikki. He is getting weirder and weirder every day. Now, you know it just as much as I do. We have to do something. What we have to do is behave as if everything is all right. He needs our support. He needs help. I don't think we're doing the right thing. We have to give it time. It's going to be all right. You just have to give it some time. Okay. Whatever you say. Dad, are you all right? Come on in, son. Nick, I'm sorry to bring you into all this. And I want you to know that I understand that you have to do what they say. I want to understand you. 
when you talk about them, who are they? Do you mean the guys at the office? It's much bigger than that. It's a whole network. What do you mean, a, a network? What are you talking about? It's the communists. Don't tell your mother. They have to shut me up. I know how they operate. Are you working for the CIA or something? Is that what all this is about? I had to leave the company because they're all in on it. Every one of them. The Brown Agency. They're all in on some kind of conspiracy? They train the spies there and then they send them out. Dad, why don't you just call the police? Because they're all in on it too. The entire Los Angeles Police Department. And the FBI. So what does this mean? We move again? No, not this time. You saw the box. Yes, yeah, so? Well, the time for playing games is over. The only way Jack Karpinski leaves Los Angeles now is in a box. Okay, these are free throws. That's three points. You gotta concentrate on the line, concentrate on the rebound. You get two things done at once. Okay, let's go. Jack Karpinski leaves Los Angeles now. He's in a box. They have to shut me up. I know how they operate. Move it, Karpinski. Hey, you okay? Nick, Nick. Just like it. I'm fine. Talk about knocking yourself out, dude. Funny, dude. Here, I want you to go to the nurse's office and get checked out. Nick, do you know what hyperventilating is? No. Sometimes when we get too uptight about things, we breathe in fast, quick little breaths. Get too much oxygen to the brain, become faint. That's what happened to you. No kidding. Now, the question is, why? How's school going? School's great. I really like it here. And home? The same. Everything's fine. There's no problems. Okay, then. You can go back to class, then. Thanks. And Nick, if you need to talk to somebody, I'm here. Okay. Please promise you'll call me. All right. Okay. Continuing with our uh, review. Pro phase. Ready? Pro... Oh, thank you, Mr. Karpinski. Nice of you to join us. Prophase. First stage of cell division by mitosis, during which the chromosomes are formed by chromation of the nucleus. Say what? Are you okay? I heard you passed out in the gym. Metaphase. Yeah, I'm all right. You know, I was just thinking about you, Lois, and I lost it. The chromosomes are aligned along the equator of the mitotic spindle. Oh, wait a minute, class. I have an announcement. There is an... Genetics exhibit at the Boritzer Gray Gallery through Sunday. Oh, yeah. A one-page written idea. report of the exhibit will count as five points for your final grade. How come I've got to do this? Because you're the cool one. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Here they come. Okay, buddy, it's now or never. Oh, hi, Nick. Hi. I was thinking of going over and watching that exhibit tomorrow. Thought maybe you'd like to go with me. We could have lunch, hang out a little bit, make a day. Gee, I'd love to, Nick, but I was already going with Karen. Well, hey, that's perfect, because Danny wanted to go, too, and Danny could go with Karen, and uh, they could go with us. It sounds good. It does? <laughs> okay, it's a date. Um, should we all meet at your house? No, no, we can't meet at my house. Um, we're gentlemen. We'll pick you up. OK. 
Okay. Well, we'll see you later, okay? Okay. Bye. 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 I like your hair combed like that. You look so grown up. Oh, Mom. I'm not going to make a big fuss. It's just that it's your first real big date, and, and you look so wonderful, and I'm so happy for you. Mom, we're just hanging out. I've hung out with girls before. I really like these kids. I want to stay here. I know, Nikki. Me too. And wait till you see your father this morning. I really feel everything's going to be all right now. We're going to be all right. We all are. That's who. Your son has a girlfriend, kiddo. Oh, now the trouble starts. <laughs> and your father is going downtown to take a civil service exam. He's going to be working in a library. A library? Oh, I know. Some might say it's a strange choice for a man with my experience. But so what? I've been letting things get away from me. That's my problem. See, I, I, I need to have a routine. I, I need to be organized. A through Z. Alphabetical order. There's nothing like it for keeping the mind straight and on target, you know? And besides, it doesn't have to be forever. Hmm. And, and I gotta work. <laughs> Man's gotta work. Oh, boy, I'm out of here. Knock him dead, honey. Oh, see you later, gang. You see? I really think he's getting better. He's just like he used to be. For now, he's having a good day, Mom. He's had them before. No, no, Nikki, this time it's different. I... It's this place. It's lucky for us, Nikki. You'll see. Did you ever stop to think, maybe you're just seeing things the way you want to see them? I mean, Dad could just be getting sicker and sicker, and we're just sitting here doing nothing. If your father thinks he needs help, he'll tell me. And in the meantime, my job is just to be here for him. Period. Okay. You have a good time. Bye. Bye. Is anybody here taking notes? I am. Me too. I'm gonna copy Karen's. No, you do that? You know a better way to get to the world's most boring subject? Don't tell anybody, but I really kind of like this stuff. Me too. You know, I think I'm gonna major in science when I go to college. Really? So am I. Nick, is something wrong? No. No, nothing's wrong. I've just been bitten by the great munchie monster. Let's go eat. Okay. Hi. Hi. So, did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. Yeah? He said he might drop in on Uncle Dad. How come? They haven't spoken in months. I told you, darling, he's getting better. You really think so? Nothing's changing. One day he's normal, and the next, you know. I think Dad should see a doctor. You mean like a psychiatrist? Yeah. And how do I get him there? Your father doesn't trust doctors. Don't you think I tried to get him to a doctor when he first began acting strange? Well, I tried. I did. It was the cause of a lot of fights between us, believe me. I hate fighting, especially with your dad. Do you know that mental illness runs in families? What are you, what are you thinking? Mom. I need to know, is anyone else in our family like Dad? No, no, oh, honey, no. Your grandmother told me that even when your father was a little boy, he was secretive and restless, he kept to himself a lot. You're nothing like that, not at all like him. You're like my father. Handsome and stubborn, right? Yeah, and modest, too. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart, I'm going to bed. Well, I'm gonna go for a walk. Well, don't be late. Always fair, always fair. No good, Jacob. No good, Jacob. No good, no good, no good. No good, Jacob. No, no, go away and leave me alone. I have work to do. Dad! <laughs> Dad? 
Dad. Dad. Dad, come in. Come on. Come on in. It's, it's cold out here, Dad. They don't know. They, they, they just won't listen to me. I, I know. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's okay. I didn't want you to hear them laughing at me. I couldn't finish the test. It was just a civil service exam, and I couldn't even finish it. When I was in junior high school, I could have aced that test, but they kept talking, those voices, that, and I got confused, and, and then they were laughing at me. They, they would call me a failure. So I just, I couldn't think, and, and then they, told me to leave, and I did. Miss Eddie? Oh, hi there. Nick, isn't it? If you're busy, I can come back. No, no, no. I was just fixing to get out of here. But I can spare you a few minutes. How are you doing? Okay, um, you said I should come in if I needed to talk? Absolutely. I have this friend. And his dad's been acting real crazy, and I'm worried about him. Crazy in what way? Well, he said that last night he climbed out on his balcony and was talking to these voices that no one hears but him. I see. He says these voices tell him what to do, and uh, he thinks it's the communists. How long has this behavior been going on? Um, about a year. It's just gotten worse recently. Before, he'd just be, you know, real quiet or, or act weird. And we, and they, they always just kept moving around. And, and he thinks that these people are out to get him. And uh, I've been reading up on it. Schizophrenic, isn't it? I'm not a doctor, Nick. But the man you describe is very sick and needs help right away. Someone has to make your mother understand that. She does understand that. She doesn't understand how to get someone to go get help when they don't want to. How do we do it? Well, each state has its own laws. And generally, if a person needs to be hospitalized and won't go voluntarily, then he has to be committed. Usually, two psychiatrists examine him and declare him mentally ill. Well, how do we get him to a psychiatrist when he doesn't like doctors? I don't know. He can't be committed by the police or even a relative. Well, unless he's clearly a danger to himself or to someone else. Miss Eddings, my father is climbing up on third-story balconies. If these voices told him to jump, he'd jump. There's a mental health center near here. Maybe yes. your mother can have a talk with a counselor. And they'll say my father has to be seen before they can do anything. I know it's frustrating, Nick. But these laws against involuntary commitment are set up to protect the civil rights of people like your dad. Thanks anyway. Hi. Mom said to put the meat one from the microwave at five. There's germs in this apartment. Germs are bad, they're dangerous. Dad. Dad, you have to listen to me. Do you remember when I was seven, I got pneumonia? And you took me to the hospital. You held my hand while they gave me the shots. 
You sat by my bed for two days. You were always there for me. And I want to be here for you now. Dad, they have medicine that can make you better. But you have to go to a hospital. You just have to. Oh, sure. Let them fill me up with their poison. Make a zombie out of me. They think it's simple. But it's not. What, to admit that you're sick and get help for it? What can be complicated about that? Try to understand, Nicholas. The way I am now is like you when you dream. And, and you know that you're in the dream, but you are not really you. And, and then these people, they, they appear from out of nowhere. And, and, and you can hear them talking, but you can't see them. And then, and then, and then they chase you, and then they, they try to do bad things to you. And then, and then these, these people are behind you all the time, but you, you don't want to turn around to look at them. Good thing you know they'll catch up to you. What? And, and so you have to keep moving. And then, and then they plant germs. Dad, please. No, you don't want to get the germs. You know, I try sometimes not to listen to them. <laughs> I tell them, go away. But it's hopeless. You can't outsmart them. Hey! Wanna play some ball after school? No. Sorry, Beck. I got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> What's happened, man? You look like you lost your best friend or something. But you didn't, because I'm right here. Okay, look. I gotta talk to you about something. This is real important. I can't tell anybody, okay? Sure. This is real personal. It's about my dad. The other day... Hey, hold that thought. Here come the dream team. Hi. Okay. We had... No, let me tell them. Okay, we thought, why don't we go down to the pier this weekend? And we can all pool our money and buy a space in the annual. And everyone wears funny hats. I mean, doesn't it sound like a trip? Excellent. Let's do it. Great. Nick, you're so quiet. No. No, I think this is a way cool idea. I've got a camera. Okay, so let's go to your house and check out the camera. We can't go to my house. Why? You never want to go to your house. What have you got over there anyway? Mozart and Bach and Brahms. My mom's a piano teacher, you guys. Oh, what a drag. <laughs> Friends, drummen, and countrymen, lend me your ears. You can't have my ears, but I'll lend you my hat. This is so cool. You get a picture of it. I can't. This horse keeps moving. Hold still, horse. Okay, say cheese. Cheese. We're going to be the most famous sophomores at Burroughs High. <laughs> thanks to Nick and his camera. Thanks to me and my idea. Hey, thanks to good friends. Yeah. Thanks to good friends. <laughs> Bye, balloon. Bye. Bye, balloon. Satan, devils, repent. Or the serpents of evil will poison you a thousand times over. Repent or you are lost. That dude smells. God, it's so sickening. Why don't they put those people away? They want me out of here in a box. Yeah, you call even one just person. Listen, just just one person to find out where I am. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing, Eddie. Nothing. What are you doing? This is a Russian hat, isn't it? Jack, for Pete's sake, it's a hat we bought for Nikki two years ago for his birthday. 
Don't you remember? So that's why you've been out with them. Not again. You've been taking pictures for them, too? I can't stand this. I can't stand this. You think I don't know what's going on around here, Wanda? I think I do it. No. No. My film. You ruined my film. I had to. Why? You know why. You were taking pictures for them. I was taking pictures for me, for my school yearbook. You spoiled it. You know, you spoil everything. I never had a girlfriend, and you ruined that. I can't have friends in my house because of you. I hate you. I wish you'd just go away and never come back. I took the pictures to the pharmacy, and their printer overexposed the negatives, so the photos are ruined. They said they're going to give us our money back. I can't believe you took our pictures to some cheapo drugstore. I mean, they always lose the film. I mean, we can't get back to the pier in time now. The pictures are due in Friday. Lois, I'm really sorry. Oh, you're sorry? I mean, we had a perfect plan, and now it's completely spoiled, and all you can say is you're sorry? Look, string me up by my thumbs, all right? I'm really sorry. I screwed up. I'm a jerk and a dweeb, okay? Lois, sometimes you can be so... Yes, I understand. Thank you. Makes you wonder if the government has enough money for guns and missiles, why they can't find some money to help sick people. All I'm hearing on the phone is, uh, sorry, but our budget's been cut. Why don't you try so-and-so, and then I call so-and-so, and they don't answer because they've cut back on their hours. And now they tell me eight clinics in this city are going to be closed next year. So what are people like us supposed to do? Should have done this months ago. I just, I just didn't want to admit how serious it is. And then this morning, the way you looked at him, I finally saw what you've been going through all this time. <laughs> just now, I got a call back from the Family Service Agency. And uh, they tell me, from my description of your father's behavior, that we'd better call the police. And they'll fill out emergency commitment papers. And then they'll... I'll come to get him in a patrol car. <laughs> this man who never did a dishonest thing in his life. If he had cancer, they wouldn't... Call him off in a patrol car to help him. I know. But I can't live another day like this. Can you? What's 
sir. Keep away from that! I've received a message. They're coming after me today. Let's be ready for it. I don't know what's going on. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I just wanted to say it's not your fault about the pictures. And I think you're really kind of cool. Thank you. Karen, now really isn't a good time. Uh, can I call you? Sure. Great. Talk to you later. Bye. I emptied it. Get rid of it. I don't care where. They, they won't be able to find me in the hospital. No, no, no. I don't know. No, no, no. no they, they can't get no, me there. No, honey, you're going to be fine. You're going to be safe here. Come, Nikki, go get your father's shaving things in the bathroom. Your dad's agreed to go to County Hospital, Nikki. They're going to take good care of him there. Absolutely. Honey, why don't you let me drive? I know what I'm doing, Wanda. Okay, all right, okay. Look out! Ah! Honey, that's a stop sign! Dad, slow down. Honey, you're going too fast. Would you look behind you? They're it's, coming! There's nobody there. What are you doing? Stop! 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 Please. Got a problem? No. Officer, my father is mentally ill. We were taking him to county hospital. He has to go. I'm not ill, and I'm not going to any hospital. My son is telling you the truth. My husband is very ill. He was violent this afternoon. Why are you lying? Look in the trunk under the blanket. Check it out, John. Officer, my son is a teenager. You know how they like to dramatize. Did you get up on the curb, please, ma'am? Hey! We got a live one. Put your hands behind your head and turn around. Oh. You'd do this to me? Let them take me away? Daddy, I'm sorry. I just want you to get better. I'm sorry. Mrs. Karpinski? Nick, I'm Dr. Rothman. Mr. Karpinski is being examined by Dr. Flanders right now. Is he all right? Is he angry? Uh, yes to both questions. Why don't you give us a little time to get his meds squared away, and then we'll know better where we stand. What are meds? Anti-psychotic medication. It's the schizophrenic's lifeline. It's like, um, insulin to a diabetic. He has to take it. Will it make him well? Let's go for better, okay? When we get the right combination of medications, then he will be stabilized. Schizophrenia is a complicated disease. Symptoms vary. While we can't talk about cure, I can offer you substantial improvement. Will he be able to hold down a job again? Wanda, I wish I could promise you that, but I can't. Now, if he responds well to the medication, maybe there's a chance. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And he was fine before. I really doubt that, Nick. 
Typically, the symptoms appear in the mid-twenties. I think your father has been fighting his illness for years. Every time he lost control, you moved. And naturally, your mother covered up for him. You bet I did. This is all my fault. That this has happened, it's all my fault. I put too much pressure on him. That's nothing to do with you, Wanda. Yes, it did. You don't know what he was like. He was brilliant and funny. But that wasn't enough for me. I forced him to go back to school. And he hated it. He hated the, the competition at school and in the job market. And then he started to withdraw into himself. It was all my fault. Wanda, you are wrong. Your husband was born with the ability to develop schizophrenia. The, the brain of a schizophrenic is different. You can see it under a microscope. Stress does not cause schizophrenia. And what does? Is it inherited? You want statistics, Nick? Okay. About one in every hundred people in this country has schizophrenia. About one in ten close relatives of every known schizophrenic has the ability to develop the disorder. You, as the son of a schizophrenic, have about a 10% chance of developing this disease. But to turn that around, there is about a 90% chance that you will never get sick. I don't think you have to worry, Nick. You've shown a remarkable degree of emotional stability in the way you've handled this crisis. Hey, I don't have an intern on my staff who could have handled things any better than you did. Thank you. So, what do we do now? We wait for you to call us? Or? I'll call you, of course. Oh, and I will uh, give you the name of the family support group that we recommend. You mean talk to strangers about this? <laughs> Dr. Rothman, I have trouble talking to members of my family about this. Wanda, do you know that one out of every four families in this country is affected by somebody who has mental illness? No, I didn't know that. Talk to people. You're not alone. <laughs> I love you. Hey, Nick. I've been calling you. Where have you been? Uh, I'm busy. Nick, before we meet the girls, I've got to talk to you. Okay, go ahead. What's up? Nick, I'm in love with someone else. Wait a minute. Let me guess. Okay, I know I'm a jerk. I, I thought I had this crush on Karen, but the whole time it's been Lois. A and even though the spring dance is coming up, I'd really like to go with Lois. Uh, but I'm your buddy, and I won't make a move unless you tell me it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm not the type of guy that would move in on... It's okay? Yeah. I like Karen. I think Karen likes me, too. You two have been having a thing behind my back. Don't you know it? Easy. Hey, hey, hey. hey here they come. Come on. Hello, ladies. Hi there. Now, uh, since apparently we're going to be double dating to the spring dance, why do you say we go to my house after school today and discuss it? Your house? I thought your mom taught piano lessons. She does. That's not the reason we couldn't go to my house. My dad has been sick for a long time. He's just gone away. He had to have an operation. That's a lie. My dad's been mentally disturbed for a long time. He thinks people are out to get him. He ruined our film. He drowned it. I guess you'd say it was crazy. I did. Hey, nobody's perfect. I'm really sorry. That's all right. Thanks, you guys. I want to be your friend.
For help or further information, write to National Alliance for the Mentally Ill, P.O. Box NAMI, Arlington, Virginia, 22216. Tonight, dropouts, pregnancy, drugs, America's children are in trouble. Barbara Walters with real solutions that could help save a generation. Survival stories growing up, down, and out. Then on Primetime Live with Diane Sawyer and Sam Donaldson, Diane Sawyer at the Berlin Wall reports on the human exodus from Eastern Europe on Primetime Live.